I don't mean to offend you, but I've seen 10 year olds who have a better handle on spiritual warfare than some people who have been walking with the Lord for years and years and years. I've seen children combat the devil in a way that is profound and effective. You've probably read the story of Willie Myrick. He was 10 years old and he hadn't yet developed his discernment, but I'll tell you what, he packed a powerful punch in spiritual warfare. As the story goes, there was a kidnapper in Atlanta who wooed little Willie with cash. And then he walked close enough to the car to grab the cash and the criminal abducted him. And that could have been tragic. And, you know, like I said, little Willie, he didn't discern the kidnapper's evil motives. He's got childlike faith. He doesn't understand, you know, the evil in the world. But he certainly knew where to run when he realized he'd been taken captive in the criminal's car. He knew where to turn. He had been raised upright. Willie started singing the Grammy award-winning song uh, by Hezekiah Walker, Every Praise. You, you may have heard it. Some of the lyrics say, you know, every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Then it goes, sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God, every praise, every praise is to our God. Well, Willie, he didn't just sing that once. No, Willie sang this over and over and over and over for three solid hours. And listen, there was no evidence that it was working. There was no evidence that the, uh, the, the captors were going to set Willie free. There was no evidence of this, but he kept on singing. And he later told news reporters that the kidnapper, <laughs> in our terms, we'd say the kidnapper manifested the kidnapper, after hearing this song for three hours, went into a cussing fit and eventually stopped the car and tossed the boy out of the car. And thank God he's no worse for the word. Now this was many years ago, um, but you know, the, the, we can learn a lot from, from Willie here. And I'm quite sure, this is probably, you know, five, ten uh, you know, years ago, he's probably a mighty warrior now to find him and interview him. But you know, here's the thing. This little boy, even after he made a mistake and found himself in big time spiritual, I mean, he was being held captive. God knows he could have been sex trafficked. He could have been sold. I mean, God knows what would have happened to this boy, right? But he refused to remain silent. He refused to remain silent in that car. And after he got out of the car, his testimony went viral on YouTube, and this demonstrated to the masses, saved and unsaved, the power of praise and spiritual warfare. And Hezekiah Walker was so touched by the story that he actually took the time to go meet with Willie. Now listen, maybe, maybe Willie heard the story of Paul and Silas in the book of Acts. Maybe Willie heard the story of Jehoshaphat, you know, uh, when they worshiped their way in the warfare. Let's look at Paul. You got to get this. Listen, if it worked for Willie, it'll work for you. And I'm not saying that praise and worship is the only spiritual warfare strategy. But what I am saying is sometimes you've done all you know to do. Sometimes you got to praise your way through. Come on, that'll tweet. Sometimes when you know you've done all you can do, sometimes you got to praise your way through. Paul the apostle cast out a devil from a girl with a spirit of divination. And when her owners, saw that they could no longer use her perverted spiritual gifts to make money, they got so mad that they had the apostles arrested. They turned them over to the authorities. I mean, they were then captive. They were then in bondage, right? The magistrates tore off the apostles' clothes, beat them with rods before throwing them into the inner prison with stocks on their feet. And we think we deal with warfare. Come on. We think, now I know it's all relative, and I know the enemy can come in hot and heavy, you know, thick, you know, clouds of witchcraft. I get it. But this is what happened. Look what happened next. Acts 16, we're going to look at verses 20 through 24. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. At midnight. At midnight. That means they were up when they could have been asleep. They were praising when they could have been snoring. Their freedom was worth more than their slumber. Sometimes we get in warfare. Come on. Sometimes we get in warfare. Well, I mean, I'll talk about myself. Sometimes I get in such heavy warfare 
There's been times where I just want to go to sleep and wake up the next day and hope that it's gone. David said he watered his bed with tears. So here is Paul and Silas praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to him. Listen, people around you, new believers, people who don't know the Lord, when you're in warfare, when you're in a trial, they are listening to your words. They are trying to see, will you glorify God? Will you stand strong? And then suddenly, bam, they're praising God. And suddenly, bam, out of nowhere, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Come on, not just the chains of Paul and Silas, but everyone's chains were loosed. We could unpack that some other time. But listen, can you imagine singing hymns to God while in a dungeon? likely waiting to be executed. How about singing a Hezekiah Walker song in a car with a kidnapper? In both instances, the captives were waging spiritual warfare against the real enemy and the spirits that motivated the attack against them. So praise and worship, as I write in my book, 101 Spiritual Warfare Tactics, if you don't have that book, 101 Spiritual Warfare Tactics that will revolutionize your spiritual warfare skills, you need that book. You can get it on my website at jenniferleclair.org or wherever you find books online. But praise and worship is a powerful weapon in spiritual warfare arsenal. It's not the only weapon. And I have to say that because some people teach that's all you got to do. Don't even worry about it. Just praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord, but take up the sword. Come on. I said, praise the Lord, but take up the sword. That, that'll tweet. I said, yes, praise the Lord, but take up the sword. Take up the whole armor of God. It's not just about the praise. Yes, praise Why you're getting the whole armor on. Praise Why you're putting on that helmet of salvation. Come on. Praise Why you're putting on that breastplate of righteousness. Come on, let's do this. Praise Why you're putting on the belt of truth. Why don't you praise Why you're putting on the shoes of peace. Why don't you praise Why you take up the shield of faith. Why don't you praise the Lord Why you swing the sword. Come on. Praise gave Jehoshaphat battle and victory. When Israel started singing and praising the Lord, God set ambushes against the enemy and they were defeated. Go read it in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 22. And let's not forget David's anointed music that delivered Saul from distressing spirits. That's 1 Samuel 16. So we read these scriptures. Yeah, I just wonder. And I'm talking to myself too. I just wonder how many of us, our knee-jerk reaction to spiritual warfare is to sing praise and worship. This every praise to our God. How many of us, that's our default. How many of us, you know, instead of feeling sorry for ourselves, instead of getting overwhelmed, how many of us sing praises to our Lord in the midst of the battle? How many of us do what Paul and Silas did and sit up till midnight just giving God the glory when the enemy has us bound up so we can barely breathe? How many of us do like Willie did and just refuse to stop singing praises to our God when the enemy is threatening us? God is always with you. But if you want to unleash more power in spiritual warfare, try praise and worship instead of screaming at the devil. I said, authority can be loud, but authority doesn't have to be loud. I'm going to talk about that another time. But I assure you, I've tried screaming at the devil and I've tried praise and worship. And praise and worship is a sharper weapon than the loudest, boldest voice binding the devil. I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with being loud. But some people equate loudness with effectiveness, and it's not true. I'm going to talk about that later. They're different, different, different subject. So we know that God inhabits the praises of his people. Psalm 22, verse 3. You know, Psalm 95, verse 1 and 2 says, Let us sing to the Lord, shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation, come before his presence with thanksgiving, and shout joyfully to him with psalms. We know that Psalm 29 verse 2 says, let us worship the Lord in the spirit of holiness, the splendor of holiness. Psalm 99 verse 5 says, exalt the Lord and worship at his footstool. I want to pray for you in a minute, but let me just say this. When we sing God's word, come on, when we sing God's word, this is a different way of fighting. When we sing God's word, we bring light into our hearts 
and into the atmosphere around us. Satan can't stand the light, but the darkness cannot comprehend the light. So when you sing the scriptures, you are releasing light into the darkness and it breaks it open. Worshiping God is resisting the temptation to look at the enemy. Praising him keeps our focus on the Prince of Peace instead of the Prince of the Power of the Air. Now I could go on and on. I got the revelation of worship and spiritual warfare a long while ago, but Willie's experience gave me a greater revelation and a deeper confirmation that we can ambush Satan with Saul. Come on, this is so good. I said we can ambush Satan with Saul. So next time you find yourself, you know, all these thoughts coming against your mind, you know, and the enemy's trying to take your thoughts captive or wreak havoc on your natural circumstances, remember Paul, remember Silas, remember Jehoshaphat, remember David, and remember Willie. Psalm 150, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Come on. Praise him with the string instruments and flutes. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with the clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I want to pray for you, but I want to remind you of a couple of things. Make sure you pick up a copy of my book, 101 Spiritual Warfare Tactics. This has revolutionized the spiritual warfare life of so many people. You can also grab hold of the School of Spiritual Warfare and other resources at schoolofthespirit.tv. You need to get equipped. I wonder how much is the enemy stolen from you? You got to take it back. The kingdom of God suffers violence. The violent take it by force. You've got to take it back. You can't be complacent. You can't wait for God to fight all your battles. He is with you and he always leads you into triumph, but he leads you. You've got to go most of the time. Yes, there are times when the enemy, uh, God will just, you know, intervene because of a past prayer you've prayed or other intercessors standing in the gap for you. But there's a time when you've got to rise up and fight. And guys, if you're an intercessor, let me teach you. Let me train you. I'm putting out monthly training videos for our Awakening Prayer Hub's leaders, as well as fellowship, community, prayer points, and more. If you want to see revival in your city, please make sure you sign up today for Awakening Prayer Hubs, awakeningprayerhubs.com. Join the movement. Let me pray for you, Father, in Jesus' name. We give you praise and honor and glory. We're so grateful for who you are and what you've done. There's just nobody like you, nobody as beautiful as you, as holy as you. You are the glorious, victorious warrior God, and we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Subscribe, follow me before you get off, and remember, join my morning prayer call right here at 6 a.m. on weekdays. God bless you. Have a breakthrough day. Are you ready to go deeper in the spirit? Do you need practical equipping that helps fast track that spiritual growth? Do you want to navigate spiritual realms and win your spiritual battles? At School of the Spirit, you'll find biblical training on demand. You can take courses on many topics such as prophetic ministry, the seer anointing, spiritual warfare, deliverance ministry, prayer and intercession, the Holy Spirit, Christian living, leadership, angels, creative arts, and so much more. Take affordable studies at your own pace. Receive certificates celebrating your accomplishments. Meet like-minded friends from around the world in our social community. Join me, Jennifer LeClaire, for an immersive online spiritual education experience like none other. I've equipped tens of thousands of people to live a supernatural breakthrough lifestyle. You're next. Your spiritual journey awaits at schoolofthespirit.tv.